I remember when I first saw you as George Dawes on Shooting Stars. Yeah. It's kind of blown away. Who, who, this, who is this guy? Because you didn't look like anybody else. You, you, yeah. and, and you were so fully formed. You were so audacious. Well, I, well, I was sort of, I had everything except actually the jokes. Because actually what I was was just a bit weird and freaky and wild. But actually, if you think about it, you know, I learned so much from working with David Walliams because David understood, you know, structure of a sketch, structure of a joke. So I had this kind of energy and this do some funny voices or whatever, but I didn't, I was pretty directionless. You know, shooting stars was incredible because Vic and Bob would give me freedom to do what I wanted when actually David wouldn't. And that was what was brilliant because we would kind of figure out and, and, I, would, and I would keep him in check as well. We want the laughs. And I think sometimes looking back on shooting stars, I could have got better laughs. I could have done better, you know, and so wow. it's weird. But then, you know, that's just me. And I kind of, I think that when I, wa I was watching the Bake Off, you know, which had just started hosting, and I was like, oh, should have done a gag there. Oh, this, that. Oh, why did you do that? So I think that's also a natural I thing. I think that we that's always... just, that's just, you, you were terrific on Bake Off. You've had wonderful write-ups okay. about it. You know, it, it's you're, you're a hit on it. And it's not easy stepping into those shoes. You say you wanted more laughs maybe, but you had such charisma and presence. And I would watch you and go, wow, you know, when you'd sit there at the drums and you'd do a thing on the drums and you'd say, so-and-so has this point. So -and, -so, and then you'd say something just obscure and obtuse. I mean, where are you, how are you doing that at such a young age? Thank you for those compliments. The, the thing is that um, you'd have to go back. Really, it, well, this was this thing, which was like when I was six years old, I lost my, you know, my hair fell out. I'd either be sort of really bullied by people quite badly, or I'd be really patronised by people. And it was like that was the only thing anybody need know about me. It was like no other aspect of me really mattered because I was the kid with no hair. So I feel like people didn't really you know, make an effort to find out anything about me or I, I, yeah. and I realised early on that I was, I was either going to be this sort of victim, you know, a, a kind of, a, a, of pity and ridicule or I was going to have to kind of, it was like a sink or swim thing. I sort of uh, fast-tracked right. uh, a, a, a personality and character. Yeah. And there were also elements, I had, you know, quite, quite, um, challenging upbringing because you know um feeling a sense of uh shame and anger and frustration and confusion about about being attracted to the same sex uh, at a time when you know the law was against yeah. gay people yeah. and you know struggling with you know you, you know doing a lot of comfort eating and do, so i was the sort of um a lot of neurosis and anxiety and all those things and then but but when I got on stage, it was the one place, you know, through school plays. And I did like National Youth Theatre yeah. where I met David. And before that, the National Youth Music Theatre. Doing those, that kind of performing was a place where I had some control. I should say to you now that this is, I'm learning stuff now. Too, I, I didn't know you were gay and I didn't know you were bald. So this is quite, well, I, it's quite the interview for me. I didn't know I was fat. <laughs> I'm not bald. My hair grows inwards. Nice, nice.